In this video, I'm going to take you through the basics of animation in Unity and using Unity's animator. The first thing that needs to be noted is pretty much anything that is contained in a scene in Unity can be rendered and animated. So what you have here is I have a short scene that has one asset and then also a couple of uh, created assets from the 3D modeling game objects. I'd also like to note, however, you can even animate the main camera object in a scene as well, if you so choose. To begin getting set up to actually animate, you're going to go under the window dropdown and there's an animation section. You have a lot of different options here and we're going to go ahead and open up the animator. Now the animator will come back to, but this is an important element as far as being able to take and go and add in additional controls as far as if you want to add C Sharpen. You would list your elements from your scene and then pull those in. Also, sometimes as you can see, it kind of opens up in a weird manner. I like to keep my animator and the other animation windows down by project and console. I'm going to open up one more window here and I'm going to go to animation and go straight to animation. Once again, as you can see, Unity really likes to open the windows in random locations. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down by the console and the animator. Now, in this window here, it's asking you to begin animating a specific element, create an animator and an animation clip. I don't want to start out with the camera right away, so let's go ahead here and I'm going to double click and come back to this sofa object. So notice now too how in the animation area, it's changed to sofa two. So I can go ahead and say create. Unity is going to want to open up and store these animation files. It is up to you as the developer. What I like to do is actually make a new folder and call it animations. And any type of animation that I make, I'll go ahead and store in this folder. So maybe I call this sofa animation and then save. Now, once you've done that, notice that your window has changed here as far as the overall dope sheet. You now have an actual timeline here as far as counters for one second. And you also have a section over here that you can actually go through and choose properties that you would like to specifically focus on in the animation. So for instance here, if I do add property, you can see that not only can I do an overall transform, but because of this sofa's asset construction, I can actually choose each of the different elements here. However, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and stick to transform and I'm going to go ahead and choose position. My goal here is that I want to animate the sofa, maybe moving back and moving over to the left there. So when you figure out what you'd like to do all the way at the end from position, you should see a little plus symbol. If I click on that, you can now see that I have an overall layout as far as the sofa positioning controls. Now to talk a little bit about this left hand side here, there is a small arrow next to the sofa positioning options that if you click down here, you can actually extend out and see your X, Y, and Z position changes. If you look to the right, currently you should see some diamonds that have now appeared. These are normally an animation, what we call keyframes. These are notations to the program as far as storing information of where an object should be at a specific point in time. To demonstrate this, if I go ahead here and I grab this white line here, which is often called a playback head, and I'm going to position it by clicking and dragging and placing it at 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead now into my scene. I already have my position tool active on the sofa and I'm going to push it back. Now you're not actually done here yet. We now need to go through and record this movement. To do this, you do have a couple of options. If you only moved it on a specific axis, you can actually change just for that axis. If you notice here when I'm doing the different movements here, I'm only moving on the Z. So I could technically come in and just change Z if I wanted to. To do so, I would just click on this small element here and add a key. Now, if I scrub back, you can see that it's now recorded my movement there. 
Now, let's say though, I want it to go all the way to the one second marker. One thing that Unity likes to do when animating though, is it sets you up with a starting set of keyframes and an ending point of keyframes, which as you can see, kind of makes this ping pong effect for the sofa here. I don't want these keyframes here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna click and hold and do what is called a marquee select to select all of the keyframes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the delete key. So now I can rewrite the keyframes. So for instance here, I said I wanted it to move on the X and maybe I move it all the way over into the corner there. And then once again, I can come in and click on the drop down to add a key. And now you can see my object moves fluidly. One other item to point out as far as basic animation is maybe for instance here, I wanted to do a small jump into the air on the Y axis. This is the beauty of keyframe animation. I'm not locked into the keyframes that I just set. So maybe I decide at about 45, it's gonna jump up onto the Y and I can add a keyframe. It's still going to go in and remember as far as your new position for the Y here, and you can pull it back down, and then we can go ahead and just add in a key for Y. So there you see it's got a little bit of a hop, and I can bring it back and position it here, and kind of bring it back down, and I'm just going in and adding keys. Lastly, you can also change as far as the speed at which your object moves. To do this, you can highlight and marquee select all of the keyframes. And then you just click and hold on one of the keyframes and you can actually drag it to a different location. So maybe I want this to get back a little bit faster as far as its overall movement is concerned, smoothing out the animation. Now, if I go ahead and preview my scene, you can see how the animation moves. With the introduction of C-sharp, you'd be able to actually play through this and have it stop once, it, once the animation is over. But that's the basics as far as getting started with animation inside of Unity.